Okay, so this is question, well, it's question one for the 2019 chemistry exam. Um, so this is the short answer section, so let's get stuck straight into it. A commercial chocolate spread is commonly used in sandwiches and desserts, good old Nutella. Uh, this food is high in the amount of proteins, triglycerides, and sucrose, yummy. Proteins are an important part of the body. Proteins are broken down into smaller molecules digest through di digestion. Sounds good. Proteins can be hydrolyzed to produce alpha amino acids. We know that. Identify one structural feature common to all alpha amino acids. Alrighty, so what's common for all alpha amino acids? Well, alpha amino acids, by definition, have the amine group of the second carbon. So I'm going to say this. They have their amino group of the second carbon, second carbon, from the C double O H group. So that identifies the fact that we have this basic structure. We have C double O H um, like this, C, and then N H H. And we have the R group. So that's basically what they look like. We have this amino group coming off this second carbon. That's what makes it an alpha amino acid because it's the alpha um, carbon which has our amino group on it, or the second carbon from this one here. Let's move on. What is the process by which amino acids are obtained from the chocolate spread? So how do we get amino acids? Well, they're from the proteins and amino acids are separated by a hydrolysis reaction. Hydrolysis reaction. Okay, so therefore they are liberated from our protein. So how do proteins get broken down? Basically, what is this question is asking? Identify the chemical process in which amino acids are predominantly used in the body. How are they used? Well, amino acids are used to produce other proteins and hormones. So basically what they're doing is they are being connected together again. So what we could say here, and it's a chemical process, Okay, so therefore, how are amino acids connected together? It's by condensation. So they're obtained from proteins by hydrolysis, where we break them apart, and then they're used by putting them back together through condensation. So hydrolysis here, condensation here. Okay, two amino acids in the chocolate spread are aspartic acid and cysteine. Draw a chemical structure for the dipeptide at a high pH. So I need to go get my data booklet here. I need to find these particular amino acids. Alrighty, luckily they're on the same page here, which is fantastic. How I draw dipeptides is I'm going to start off with a um, peptide linkage, which is going to be, um, sorry, N, I'll draw it here, N to C, double bond to H, like this. This is my peptide linkage, and then I'm going to put the rest of it in there. Actually, that's not how I draw it. Start off with the C, double one to O, N, and that goes down because um, if I look at the cysteine here, my um, carboxyl is on the end. So then I'm going to put in my cysteine, which is to CH2, then to SH, and then I'm going to go NH there. Now I know that it's, it hasn't got a bond here, so it doesn't continue on, so it finishes on the H. And then I'm going to go and into, um, what is it? It is going to be going into aspartic acid. So aspartic acid is here. Okay, so therefore I need to copy what that says there. So off I go from the N to the C here, to the H, to the CH2. Now I've got a high pH. So what does that mean? I have, means it's acting as an acid in a base. So high pH means not a lot of H positive. So therefore my um, acid group here will be deprotonated and my acid group here will be deprotonated as well. So therefore this will be my high pH um, version of this. It's not a very pretty um, answer to this question. I started drawing my peptide linkage around the wrong way. But key thing is, um, being a high pH, you need to make sure that these are definitely deprotonated because we don't have a lot of hydrogen ions around because it's a high pH. It's not an acidic environment. It's a basic environment. And let's move on to our next question. Let's double check. All my bonds here are going to the right things. Going to make sure that your bonds go to your carbons 
and your oxygens and not to your hydrogens and that's pretty good there. Also it doesn't say show all bonds, so that's why I'm just putting CH2 there, not um, actually showing the hydrogens. If it said show all bonds, I would need to show these extra bonds here to the hydrogens either side. But I don't. So let's move on. Uh, triglycerides in the chocolate spread contain palmitic acid and palmolytic acid, whatever it is. Um, how are you going to pronounce that? So I need to go to my data booklet and go find my fatty acids while I read my next question. Which of these fatty acids is more likely to have a higher melting point? Explain my reasoning. All right, so melting points in triglycerides and fatty acids are about two things, the size of my fatty acid, but also the number of carbon to carbon double bonds in my fatty acid. So once I find these, I'll then look at these, the, um, those two things. Where is it? Here it is. So I'm looking at these two here, and I can see they're both carbon-15, so they're for they have the same car length of carbon chain, but you can see here that this guy here has a carbon to carbon double bond. That means it's going to have a lower melting point than um, palmitic acid. So therefore, which one's going to have the higher one? Um, palm, I'll move it over here. Palmitic acid will have a higher um, melting point due to it not containing carbon to carbon double bonds. Important to ensure we say carbon to carbon double bonds. Um, this, explain my reasoning, this means it will stack closer together than um, palmitolic acid and have stronger dispersion forces holding it together and almost used exactly the right number of lines there as well. Um, but clearly um, the idea is to talk about the carbon to carbon double bonds but you should also know what those carbon to carbon double bonds do. Carbon to carbon double bonds basically create kinks within the chain so therefore uh, molecules don't stack closely together if they have carbon to carbon double bonds. So therefore if it doesn't have carbon to carbon double bonds it will stack closer together. The stacking then discusses around your dispersion forces. Dispersion forces are important whenever talking about melting points or boiling points. You need to talk about the forces holding things together with those particular questions. Lastly, draw the structure of a triglyceride that contains only this type of acid using the semi-structural formulas. Circle and label a triglyceride functional group. All right, triglycerides, you should have a system in drawing these. Basically, you start off with your um, triglyceride, your glycerol backbone, which will be simply this guy. Then you should draw in your ester functional group, which we're going to circle and label by the sounds of it, because that is the functional group that is in within the, um, the triglyceride. So therefore, I'll just do that now. That is an ester group, ester functional group. And then I'm going to draw the semi-structure, which I'm going to simply copy from this. So therefore, I'll put it there so we can see. And we're looking at this guy here. So, um, and because this is my um, carboxyl group, I then copy from this way. So I start off with a CH2, then I have CH25, CH2, CH, double bond to CH, CH2, bracket CH24, CH3. Three. And then, annoyingly, I'm just going to copy that down. But I have to because that's what the question asked me to do. And therefore, I'll just simply copy this down as I do it. And there's my double bond again that I'm talking about in the question beforehand. CH2 bracket 4. This is a long amount of actual writing for a small number of marks. But I want those marks because they're easy marks to get because it was simply just copying out of the data booklet properly. 
two, bracket four, CH three. And then I'll just double check that again. Um, starting again, polymetic acid, starting here, um, CH two, CH two five, CH two, CH two, CH, CH two, CH two four, CH three. And that should be fine. Um, and I've circled that, I've drawn the right thing out, and there's my two marks for that entire structure, which I think is ridiculous, but so be it, that's the question.